What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. We're talking about the iPhone 12, iPhone number one out of four recently released iPhones in Apple's 2020 smartphone lineup. This phone is obviously the successor to last year's iPhone 11, but there's a much deeper story here. For years now, we've seen Apple launch phones like the iPhone XR, the iPhone 11, and now the iPhone 12, which you would consider to be the entry-level flagship phones. And they've always launched more premium flagship phones that typically are dubbed with the Pro moniker, like the XS, the 11 Pro, and the 12 Pro. Now in the past, those phones have offered a lot more in terms of build quality, extra camera lenses, maybe some more RAM on the inside, better display quality overall. There's always been something to incentivize people to spend that extra cash on the Pro models. But this year around, the iPhone 12 has a lot of good things going for it, and it makes that decision so much harder to make. In their keynote, Apple was touting this all new design for this year's iPhones, but if you actually use the phone, or just look at it, you'll realize it's not all that new. Honestly, the build of this year's iPhone reminds me a lot of like a hybrid between the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 5, which fortunately for myself, I personally believe those were some of the best looking iPhones Apple has ever made. And as such, the iPhone 12, in my opinion, is the best looking iPhone Apple has ever made. Now, obviously, unlike the 5, instead of being majority aluminum on the back panel, it's your standard glass on the back, glass on the front, and aluminum around the enclosure. But everything about this phone is flat. The display is flat, glass on the back is flat, edges are flat and sharp. The phone just looks and feels super, super nice. It's the type of phone where you may just hold it in your hand just to appreciate how it feels whenever you're holding it. Now it is a premium build, so you get all the extra premium features as well, like an IP68 water and dust resistance rating, and you also get wireless charging. Although Apple stepped it up this year with the wireless charging game, and they introduced MagSafe to the iPhone. Now this basically utilizes a series of magnets in the back of the phone that allows Apple to make a new series of accessories like magnetically attachable cases, chargers, wallets, you name it, Apple is probably working on it now. I think the real thing to focus on here though is that MagSafe not only makes wireless charging more efficient because it makes sure that the wireless charging pad and coil are in direct contact with each other or at least the most accurate contact with each other, but it's probably phase one in Apple killing the lightning port and moving to a completely portless iPhone. So if that ends up happening in like a year or two, you heard it here first. Tech Bros iPhone 12 review 2020, we called it iPhones are going portless at some point in time. To add to that new design aesthetic, Apple also managed to shrink down the bezels on the iPhone 12 as well. Now, the interesting thing to note about the display on the iPhone 12 is that it's actually an OLED panel. This is a little different from what we've seen in the past years where most entry-level flagship phones just have a standard LCD panel. The OLED was typically reserved for those Pro models. Now you're seeing them on the entry-level flagship iPhones, which is awesome. So you're keeping the same resolution. You get slightly smaller bezels around the edges, but because you're now dealing with OLED, you get brighter, more vibrant colors. It's just nicer to look at overall, and the display can achieve a pure black color, which is excellent. So display quality-wise, even the entry-level flagship iPhones are now flexing an OLED display. If we were to go back in time three years, the iPhone 10 debuted at $1,000, and one of the reasons why it was such an expensive smartphone at the time was because it featured that near bezel-less OLED display with Face ID. Here we are three years later, and that same technology is now on the entry-level flagship iPhone 12. You'll love to see it. Under the hood of the iPhone 12, you'll find Apple's A14 Bionic processor with four gigs of RAM. Now, I know in the grand scheme of things, four gigs of RAM may seem somewhat unimpressive, but Apple tackles performance from a two-pronged approach. Number one is the incredibly powerful silicone that they make. The A14 Bionic is based off of a five nanometer architecture, which is one of the first mobile phones to feature a five nanometer processor. It's incredibly awesome from a performance standpoint. And their other approach to performance is just how well they optimize iOS iOS 14 is obviously the best version of iOS, and it's incredibly optimized to run on the hardware that Apple creates. So performance on the iPhone 12 is best in class. It's probably the best performing smartphone on the market. Now, 
If you're no stranger to Apple and the way their hardware works, you would know that performance is never really a worry whenever it comes to the latest flagship phones from Apple. So for me, my concern was not performance, it was battery life. But the iPhone 12 does incredibly well. I mean, I've been taking this thing off charge at like probably 7.30 in the morning, and it's been comfortably lasting me through the evening all the way to like nine or 10 o'clock at night with like 40 to 50% battery life. That is incredible considering, like I said, they're thinner and feature more powerful hardware this year round. So battery life and performance, A+. Camera wise, the iPhone 12 is still rocking two sensors. You get a 12 megapixel wide angle and a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle. Although there is a slight difference this year, the wide angle lens does have a larger aperture, f1.6 versus last year's f1.8. Now this is gonna help that lens take in more light, which theoretically should lead to better low light performance and overall photo quality. The iPhone 12's camera system is impressive. It takes the type of photos that you would expect to see from a flagship iPhone. It's not really something that I was worried about, to be honest with you, but I will say this. If you're the type of person who wants to buy a new iPhone and the best of the best camera performance is at the top of your list, you may want to hold out for the 12 Pro Max. Now that is supposed to have the overall best camera system. And obviously since it's a pro model, you'll get a third lens, which will be a telephoto. But the 12 Pro Max should be touting the best overall camera system, but the 12 is no slouch. I am really impressed with the photo quality that the 12 is able to create. And it definitely lives up to the expectations you would have from a flagship camera system. I think the real story here is in the iPhone 12's video capabilities. So obviously you have your standard flagship video capabilities like the ability to shoot video in 4K at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second, but Apple took it a step further in this department. The iPhone 12 is able to shoot video in HDR with Dolby Vision certification at 30 frames per second. Now Dolby Vision is a format used by a lot of film studios and it's super impressive to see Apple bring this kind of technology to the iPhone 12. And another thing to keep in mind is you can shoot in Dolby Vision and also natively edit Dolby Vision videos right on the iPhone 12. Now obviously the iPhone 12 is not going to replace a full cinema video setup, but Apple has essentially put the iPhone 12 in its own category whenever it comes to video quality compared to other smartphones. The competition in video quality is not even close. There are two things that I want to touch on that may or may not live up to the hype depending on your use case scenarios with the phone. Number one is the ceramic shield. So I'm not even going to attempt to fully explain the technology that goes behind ceramic shield whenever it comes to the display, but just know that Apple has found a way to implement nano crystals or ceramic nano crystals into the glass manufacturing process of the display. Now this is supposed to help the iPhone 12 be more shatter resistant whenever it's dropped. The key thing to keep in mind here is it's for impact protection not necessarily scratch protection. This display can definitely still be scratched if you are rough on the display of your iPhone. So while it is nice to see that you may be saved if you drop the phone once or twice, keep in mind that if you're still rough on the phone itself, you should probably invest in a nice screen protector. The second is 5G. So I'm sure you've probably seen tons of advertisements all over TV, or maybe even on some YouTube videos that with the new iPhone 12s, 5G just got real. It's not as real as you might think. Fake news, it's fake news, it's fake. So keep in mind that 5G is still growing in terms of availability across the nation, and even our major carriers here in the United States haven't really implemented 5G in the vast majority of the United States. I think the company that's the closest is Verizon with their 5G ultra wideband, but keep in mind that that's going to really depend on where you live and 5G ultra wideband is only available in some of the most populated cities across the United States. So my iPhone 12 Pro is on Verizon with the 5G ultra wideband network and the iPhone 12 was tested on AT&T. I never once saw 5G on the top right corner of my iPhone 12 Pro, which is on Verizon, keep in mind, 
but I did consistently see 5G in the top right corner of the AT&T phone. Now keep in mind that just because you may see 5G in the top right corner, it doesn't necessarily mean you're getting 5G download speeds. I would highly suggest downloading a network testing application to see if you're actually getting those really fast download speeds. So the good news is that these iPhones are ready whenever 5G becomes more readily available. It just shouldn't be the main reason why you're buying these new iPhones right now. But that's about it. Those are my thoughts on the new iPhone 12. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say it now. We're gonna have to wait to see what all the iPhone 12 mini has to offer. But I think as it currently stands, the iPhone 12, when you consider the amount of features you get at the price point, I don't think there's an iPhone in their current lineup that justifies its price more than the iPhone 12. For the vast majority of people who are on the market for a new iPhone, this is the one that's going to give you the most amount of features for the price that it asks for. Now keep in mind that if you're going to buy an iPhone 12, you may see that its starting price is $799. That's actually not true. Fake news. That's if you buy an iPhone 12, but also activate the phone on either AT&T or Verizon's network at the time of purchase. If you buy the phone unlocked, it actually starts at 829 bucks for the 64 gigabyte model. But let's be honest, you probably shouldn't buy the phone at 64 gigs of storage. It's only $50 more to jump up to 128. So spend 879, get the 128 gigabyte iPhone 12, and you won't be disappointed. If you guys enjoyed our review, make sure you hit like and subscribe down below. I believe our next review is going to be the iPhone 12 Pro, which is going to be awesome. So you don't wanna miss that. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh, and please be safe. Please. Managed to shrink down the bezels of the display. Now, another interesting thing about the iPhone 12 it's. 12 it's. 12 it's.